Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo. And today we're going to talk a little bit about staying as healthy as you possibly can during an extended or binge gaming session. I thought this was a great time to bring this topic up again and refresh it. The last time I recorded a discussion like this was Call of Duty Ghosts, which didn't actually end up being very good. That was also the first time I was excessively disappointed with the Call of Duty game. Anyways, of course, a lot of us are going to be looking forward to tonight, Monday at midnight, the launch of Fallout 4. And I felt that this was a great time to bring this discussion up again and to just try and kind of push awareness for being more healthy as gamers. You know, we're talking about binge gaming sessions here, but really all of this can be applied to any sort of component of your life um, in my opinion it's all about how far you want to take it and how far you want to explore the the elements the components of being a healthier person so the first thing we really need to talk about because it's the first thing that comes to mind i think for anyone when they talk about an extended play session you know this could be anything this could be eight hours 10 hours 24 hours 48 hours is the fact that you're going to be sitting that's what you do when you play games most of us sit for very long periods of time. This also applies for people who work in office spaces. They spend a lot of time at a desk. Like myself as a YouTuber, I spend you know up to eight to 10 hours a day sometimes just sitting at my desk. Something that I've become extremely conscious and aware of, not just from personal experiences, but because there have actually been studies on this now, is how important it is to get up and walk around. Like seriously, sitting for more than two or you know to three hours starts to cause a lot of problems with your body. You can get blood clots. You're cutting off the blood flow to your legs. Um, you're gonna have more back issues. There's just a lot of things going on. It doesn't matter how good your office chair is. I know there are chairs out there that claim 12 plus hours. Yes, but the plain and simple fact is, five to ten minutes of getting under your chair is an incredibly short period of time that is guaranteed to not only ensure your long-term health but also make that sure that your short-term comfort during the length of that extended play session is through the roof much higher than it could be had you decided to just sit on your arse for eight plus hours without budging um so what i recommend and what i like to do personally i do this like i said throughout the course of my normal day i just get up and i literally just pace around my room for a couple of minutes i'll open a window i'll look outside i'll i'll whatever i'll you know check my ceiling i'll dust the lights um but five to ten minutes the longer than better every hour of play time get up spend five minutes spend 10 minutes whatever you walk around the room draw on the walls i don't care just get up and make your legs work um, you know, if you've got some exercise bands, I have a kettlebell. I, you know, I'll do some kettlebell swings throughout the course of the day, usually. Just throw in a few reps here and there. Anything to just get my body moving and flowing, get the blood pumping back to my legs, and ensure that I am not becoming stagnant like swamp water. And everyone knows how bad swamp water smells. You don't want to become swamp water. No one will talk to you when you finally leave that room at the end of that session. <laughs> Honestly, it's just, it's, it's a health thing. Uh, people need to become more conscious of it. We're so... You know, it's used and prone to people to say, oh, just sit in your desk, it's your shift, you know. Um, and I really think this is something I'd like to see people take, you know, into their workplace. Get up, walk around your cubicle, walk around the office, go for a drink of water. When your boss asks you why, say, it's for my own health, that's why. I don't want to sit in my chair for eight hours and have my legs be numb at the end of the day. It's not a good thing, so please, this is something to be seriously conscious of. It was funny because one of you guys actually pointed it out in my Fallout video where I talked about how I'm covering Fallout 4. You were very concerned. I appreciate that. Um, I think awareness for this definitely needs to be spread. We just need to be healthier as human beings, not just as people who also play games. You know, it applies outside of gaming. So let's talk about the more serious element of all of this. You know, obviously sitting in the chair, doing that stuff for too long is important, but I think the thing where people really go wrong, and I'm not just talking really about, you know, the health the health problems that we're going to talk about when consuming these beverages and eating these foods. But the biggest thing for me, when I'm, you know, participating or going to engage in any sort of extended binge type gaming session, I want to be comfortable throughout that session. I don't want to have a stomach ache. I don't want to be, you know, dealing with diarrhea, muscle cramps, any of these problems that can arise from the consumption of energy drinks, junk foods, caffeinated beverages, sugary beverages, sodas, so on and so forth. You know the list. You know what I'm talking about here. Your Monsters, your Red Bulls, your Pepsis, your Mountain Dews, your Doritos, your fast foods, your chicken fingers, your chicken wings, all of that stuff. You know, I'm not trying to be your nutritionist here. Frankly, none of that stuff should ever be consumed on a regular basis. But hey, if there's one time when you really shouldn't do it, it's during these extended play sessions. It may seem easy, it may seem convenient, it may seem necessary to drink a Red Bull to stay awake. Trust me, it's not. Um, I have in spent 
pretty much my entire life, my adult life, avoiding um, caffeine because I see how people are addicted to it and how it is a requirement for their everyday function. Like people seriously, they need coffee just to move in the morning. It's why Tim Hortons has a line, you know, six streets over from nearby my house every morning and during lunch break. People can't, they can't even make it to the day without four or five cups of coffee. Um, let me tell you something. You're missing out on something great. It's called natural energy. It's called being able to stay awake for 48 hours without the consumption of caffeine. Um, we're not in the military. We're not in the trenches. We don't need to force our bodies well beyond their limits on a regular basis. There is very little reason for the constant consumption of caffeine and caffeine addiction as we see it. Um, so some of you come, you know, your midnight session, you might not be able to do it just because your body, um, you know, requires it. But for those of you younger people out there who don't consume caffeine on a regular basis who feel like I'm going to have a Red Bull this one time to stay awake during this gaming session, avoid that. Really all it's going to do is make you crash. Um, you're going to have it. You're going to feel more energetic than you normally do because you're not used to caffeine. I know that's how I am. If I consume a Red Bull, I bounce off the walls for 15 minutes um, and then I feel great for like a half an hour and then I feel like crap for the rest of the day. Avoid that. Really, when it comes to beverage choices, water, 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 water. If you need something throughout the day to cut, you know, unflavored water, I understand that. Not everyone should drink water all day. There's great options. You know, you have juices out there, plenty of unconcentrated juices you don't want juice from concentrate you know great natural apple juices uh you know whatever grape whatever you like go for that kind of stuff there's a company called honest tea which i'm going to link down in the description below they pretty much sell great tea products all over the place this is real tea we're not talking lipton or brisk or that nasty brown stuff in a bottle that they supposedly flavor with raspberry that makes me want to vomit when I think that's what people think of tea. No, this is serious tea. This is like oolong tea, great white teas with, you know, nice light mango or orange flavorings. You know, we've got just like light iced lemon tea, you know, real teas that don't have tons of sugar in them. They're amazing. And I feel so many people miss out on this stuff. So I always make a recommendation for it, especially when it comes to big net releases, because um, honest tea is my tea of choice when it comes to things like this. I'm going to be heading to Wegmans tomorrow after work to pick up my typical... Um, three-quarter gallon of honest tea white oolong mango which is fantastic honestly check it out see if there's a retailer in your local area and give it a go i really recommend the white mango i feel like it's a great tea for people who don't drink a lot of teas but if you want to be more adventurous they have green teas black teas they have single bottle stuff larger bottle stuff give it a go i think it's one of the best choices um tea is just amazing in general you know it doesn't have a lot of the sugars that most apple juices will even have and really, there's just endless amounts of benefits from consuming tea, healthy tea like that. And it is extremely low in caffeine. Don't let anyone ever tell you that all tea has as much caffeine as coffee because that's BS. Is there tea that has as much caffeine as coffee? Yes. White teas, green teas, not traditionally. Those are going to be great teas that you consume throughout the day. They're not going to have any caffeine effects from them. Strongly, strongly recommend them. So recap, water, tea, Healthy juices, low sugar items, no caffeine. Avoid the caffeine, please. Trust me. You're going to feel great if you can manage to go throughout the course of that session without caffeine. Caffeine is just going to make you feel worse eventually. So let's talk a little bit about your food choices. Again, not trying to be anybody's nutritionist here. These are just my personal recommendations. And from experience, I can prove to you that eating and consuming these things um, has made my extended play sessions far more comfortable and enjoyable and again for me that's my main goal during a long play session is to make sure that i'm not focusing on stomach aches back pain um you know caffeine withdrawals and, cu and come downs you know after you off a sugar eye i'm focused on being comfortable so i can then focus on enjoying the game getting ready to give you guys my first impressions of it so for foods, enjoy the, you know, avoid fat and greasy stuff. Chicken fingers may be quick and easy, you know, pizza pockets and pizza bagels and all of those ridiculous things. Yeah, they're easy. You can microwave them. You can shove them in your mouth with your greasy fingers, all over your keyboard and controller. Avoid that stuff. Um, you know, think about actually stopping lunch, eating a nice sandwich, something light on wheat bread, perhaps white bread, you know, whatever you choose. Um, something light, some turkey, maybe just a little bit of mayo, you know, go with the lighter stuff. Um, and in terms of snackage, fruits are great. Vegetables are great. If you like carrots, I love slicing up some carrots. I'm eating that with just, you know, some homemade ranch or something light. Uh, bananas, I like sliced apples, I think are amazing. It's proven that crunchy foods, like crunching into an apple, are better at satisfying our hunger because it activates an actual thing in our brain that says we're consuming food then. Um, so bananas and apples, I like that combination. Maybe some light crackers to go with it, you know, something to kind of help fill your stomach a little bit more. Those, to me, are great snack things. 
Um, you know, definitely, I think you want to avoid candy, um, you know, chocolate bars and things of that nature. Um, actually, real chocolate, it can be healthy, but, you know, munching down 50 million bags of M&Ms is not going to help your day be any better during that gaming session. So just be a little bit more considerate and conscious about what you put into your body during these sessions. Again, these are just my recommendations. Avoiding the caffeine and drinking way more water. Taking those 5 to 10 minute breaks while you're sitting, while you're sitting on the chair. These are definitely things you just want to be well aware of. And I promise that you're just going to have a much better night, a much better day. Um, and again, this is all from experience. You know, I used to be one of those people in my youth who was like, Midnight release, Halo 2's coming out. Let's make, um, you know, a ton of, a ton of like ridiculously highly caffeinated tea. And let's stay awake till 6 in the morning purely on caffeine. And... It didn't actually work. <clears throat> I mean, you stayed awake, but your body felt like hell. You felt like death. Um, you know, you made chicken wings with your buddies, and it's just all the grease and everything just settled in the body of your stomach, and you just felt like absolute death. Um, the only thing I want to feel at the end of a really long gaming session is tired because I haven't slept. I don't want to feel any of those other, you know, emotions or physical ailments. <laughs> So keep all of those things in mind that we talked about today, guys, and I promise that your session will just be that much more enjoyable. This is something that I really, you know, think about on, on, a, on a constant basis because of the amount of time that I do spend having really lengthy sessions to try and prepare for a first impression. You know, I want to put in eight or ten hours of a game on the first day so I can bring you guys what I feel is an accurate first impression that has touched on a lot of bases of the game. Um, that's why I always felt that there's been more strength in the idea of first impressions than in reviews. Because it's more about listening to what I have to actually say about the game, allowing me to break down the components, my impressions, of the first 10 hours. Which, man, first 10 hours. I mean, come on. If you don't like the game at that point, it's not worth your money. Um, it's nice to have someone actually sit there and listen to a first impression rather than just scroll to the end of one of my reviews, look at a number, and then walk away. You know, it doesn't make it feel like my work has been wasted, and I feel like it gets the point across... The elements that people want to hear about a game far better. Whew. Monday. It's Monday, guys. I'm actually really, really excited. Um, you guys will be seeing this video before I go to work, so it's going to be my last day of work. I've got a couple days off to cover Fallout then. i um, stoked about the midnight release. I hope all of you guys have a great midnight release if you are planning to play the game at midnight um, and talk with friends in Xbox Party. May your friends be silent during the important parts, and may you all uh, share your wonderful stories when the time has come. I'm very much looking forward to sitting down with my brother on Midnight Release as well as a couple other friends probably and playing the game and really, you know, talking about our experience as things go on. I think that's always been one of my favorite parts of Bethesda games, so I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, Wednesday, I didn't want to kind of talk about this briefly. Uh, Kato and I are going to be recording the Pipcast, so there is possibly a good chance the Pipcast will be live on Wednesday. It'll just be later in the day. Honestly, I'm just going to put it up as soon as I can. So if we finish it on Wednesday and I can manage to get it done by 7 o'clock or 1 in the morning, it doesn't matter. It's going to go live and be ready for you guys to check it out. We're going to be talking a lot about Fallout 4. I know a lot of you are going to be looking forward to it. It's going to be freaking awesome. So that does it, guys. Enjoy your midnight release. If you have any other questions or concerns for me, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the wasteland.